And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Tim Hedges, international composer, singer, and pianist, who, while being in the hospital in Spain, crossed over to the other side into a place of pure love and more. Tim, thank you for joining me and welcome. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, Tim, I think you may need a little backstory before you get into your NDE. So can we start there? For sure. Um, well, it's, uh, it's, 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 well, it's not a, a long, that long a story, but it's a story that, um, that, uh, that is quite, it's not a normal story, you know, um, but not, it is normal for people watching this show, I suppose, but um, something that I've just, I, I kept mostly to myself. Um, uh, over the years, but when I when I saw this podcast, I thought, well, um, I've got to tell it. You know, I've got to say it because this is this is amazing. You know, um, I was um, I, I've always been a musician. I mean, ever since I was well four years old, I've always been able to play the piano. I did my first gig when I was in a, in a, um, a, a, away in a manger at Christmas time uh, in England, um, South England, a place called Gospel, uh, which is near Portsmouth. And that was my first singing. But I mean, I've I've always been uh, somebody that can always play an instrument. I've, I've virtually born playing instruments. Anyway, um, I, I I got a contract in Spain, and that took me on through to the um, Canary Islands, which is also Spain. And I had a, I had a quite a good career there, playing uh, in the piano bars, and uh, and then going off to other different countries. But what basically happened in my case was. Um, I'd had a, I'd landed a quite a beautiful job playing the piano, um, in a, in a piano bar called Saint Tropez in a place called Los Cristianos in, uh, in the south of Tenerife, uh, which is a holiday island, uh, and a volca- actually a volcano, uh, not active volcano, but um, in any case, this this uh, this piano bar, um, so several things happened in it that. Um, that was quite strange. I would, I'd been playing the piano, and I'd saw I've seen this wine glass come towards me, and I and I thought, well, who's pushing that? You know, and I wondered what what the hell was going on. Uh, so uh, I I had to stop the wine glass from coming onto the keys of the piano. It was a beautiful white piano, I was dressed in a beautiful white suit. Uh, it was like a like a dream, you know. And I had to stop this glass you know and i thought what well, if i don't stop it that's going to go all over the piano keys and get all of my suit i saw i stopped the glass anyway um i took that as a kind of a warning i remember my grandmother saying to me um last thing she said to me and uh, when i've gone back to see her in england was uh keep off the wine stay off the wine don't don't drink too much wine and i, and I thought that was odd because i didn't drink a lot of well, well i suppose she meant alcohol or anything but so all right fair enough um, so, um, that, that kind of like spooked me up a little bit, thinking about what, you know, what's going to happen, you know, is this, uh, is this, uh, a, a pre, um, uh, something to what is going to happen or something like that. So I was, I, I just put it aside. Um, and then one day I'd been invited to a, another bar downstairs by a client to have a drink. And I, I don't know, I suppose I had a couple of gins or whatever, and I was quite tired. Uh, it was quite late at night and, and, um. You know, in in Spain, in Spain, it, it's not. It wasn't those days. Not too strict about the, the driving and, and and having a drink. I wasn't completely plastered, but I was tired. You know, this is a a fatal combination. So, uh, I I got into my brand new car, which was a Fiat Punto, and I uh you know like I I I shouldn't have got in into it actually, but um I did, <laughs> and I thought well I, I seem to be okay. You know, I'm I'm all right. You know, I, I open the windows. Get some fresh air. There. You know, I only live about twenty kilometers down the road. Uh, I'll be okay to drive. You know, um, should have checked into a guest house or something. But anyway, I got in and um, and uh, and drove about ten kilometers. I believe it was ten kilometers. And um, then I, all I remember after that was was actually falling off to sleep, falling asleep. And uh, and then then I woke up. Uh, I must have drifted off because then I woke up and, and the car was just like spinning round and round and round. It didn't go up, didn't go uh, upside down. It wasn't like a washing machine thing. It was just flat against you know like spinning flat on the on the road. 
going around and around it. It's like going like a merry-go-round, you know, like in a roundabout in, in, when you've got a children's playground. And um, and, and you know when you when you do, when you when you've come out of a kind of a, a, a when you've had a, a, a drink, you've gone to sleep. All this is like a dream, and, it, and it, but it was true because um, I crashed. Uh, I, apparently, what happened was uh, a car. Uh, I, I'd gone to to a side of a car. It was on a motorway, um, uh, like a like a actually a, a motorway. Yeah, it was a motorway. Um, and the car pushed me this way. And because I didn't have any hands on the wheel, I'd, I'd slept. The wheel sped, span like that, and the car the car just just went round and round and round, skidding round and round and round. And so I hit the central elevation, which happened to be made out of concrete. I mean, nothing's going to go through it. Nothing. Not even a truck, not a lorry, nothing, and uh, and smashed the car completely. I mean, almost like the whole passenger side was completely flat. I mean, if it, if I'd have hit that side, then I wouldn't be here talk, telling the story now. So the whole thing was flat. And as soon as I impacted, uh, okay, it woke me up. As soon as I hit the in, uh, on impact, I woke me up, and I heard my grandmother say, "I told you so. <laughs> I told you so." Uh, I heard, I felt her presence there. And she was saying, you know, I told you, didn't I? You know that. I tell you something, I felt so stupid at that moment. Um, so um, where are we now? So I'm, I'm there in the, in the crash, right? I mean, I, I, the pain, you cannot even think. The pain starting, because the initial shock takes the pain away. You ask anybody, when, you, when, when something straight away happens, you can't feel it, you don't know what's happening. But then the pain starts to come, you know? And um, so I had seven broken ribs. And, you know, uh, anybody that's had seven broken ribs will tell you that you can't even breathe properly. Uh, I had one of the ribs pushed into my heart, um, right into my heart by the steering wheel. The steering wheel didn't look like a steering wheel anymore. Uh, it looked like, um, uh, it looked like uh, uh, I don't know what it looked like. It was all bent and everything. The whole car was trashed. And um, a brand new car, too. Yeah, that's the same about it. Anyway, um, at least I lived. Uh, I, I walked across the road. It was quite, quite late at night. So there was, it wasn't any traffic or anything. It was quite quiet. I thought, what am I doing on this side of the road? Because uh, uh, the car turned completely around. I thought, I can't be back in England again. I'm on the left-hand side instead of the right-hand side. So um, there was me thinking that I was, because um, uh, I, I couldn't believe how could I be on this side of the road? That, that kept nagging me. But the pain was excruciating. It was so, it hurt me so much. That I crossed the road, uh, and I, I got on my knees and I fell down and I banged the road. I don't know why I did that, but I banged the road to take away the pain. Somehow I thought if I did that, it would help me get rid of the pain. And, and I, my, I had a brand new suit and I was rubbing it on the road, trying to, in, in order to get rid of the pain, it was so painful. I got picked up by an ambulance and um, they put me in this ambulance and uh, they wouldn't give me any air or anything. And listen, I couldn't breathe. And I said, I said in Spanish, because I spoke quite good Spanish. I still speak quite good Spanish because, you know, um, I learned the language when I went there because I actually liked the language, you know, I, I did like the Spanish language. So I, I, I spoke to her, I said, no se puede respirar. I cannot breathe. No se puede, no se puede. And when they when I said that, um, I, said, I, I said, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And she said, no, you're not going to die. Because uh, I thought that's what was going to happen. Anyway, he stuck the the mouthpiece on, on, on me, give me some air, uh, oxygen. And um, so I was able to, finally, I was able to breathe. And uh, they got me in the hospital, and I just, I think I kind of passed out, you know, because I like, was in and out of consciousness, you know. I mean, the pain was unbelievable, you know. I, I think they must have given me some 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 painkillers or something like that. Um, but I don't think that was related to the experience. I've got, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's got nothing to do with it. But a lot of people say, oh, yeah. You know, they've given you some painkillers. You're going to be, you're going to be hallucinating, you know, so things like that. Well, actually, I did, uh, but I'll speak about that later. But that wasn't anything about my experiences. Another experience I had, and I think it was to do with the brain. Uh, um, um, my brain was, uh, and my eyesight. That's what it was, and everything that happened. I suppose. Anyway, that's another story. I'll go into that later. Uh, getting back to the main main story. Um, of course, uh, then, then I saw my next door neighbour and my then my then wife, which is Moroccan, who's Moroccan. Uh, uh, I, I kind of woke. I was woken up and to see them, and because I I had I had actually some brain damage. Don't get that wrong. 
uh, you can get brain damage, but it won't affect the thinking part of your brain. This damage was at the back of my head. And I understand why the impact was so hard. Okay, to give you an idea, the impact was so hard that it broke the keys of my car. Now, can, can you imagine how, how strong that impact was to break the keys of your car? They were completely broken, all of them, in two parts, all of the keys. So, um, so something must have, when I banged my head on, on the, it must have done something at the back of my head. Don't ask me how. But the back of your head controls your uh, peripheral, peripheral vision. I think it's per per peripheral. Peripheral vision. Peripheral. Peripheral. Peripheral vision. Yeah, it's it's like a fly. A fly can see all around. Yeah, more than what we can. Um, but we do have it too. But it's only it's like you can see something out of the corner of your eye. But this time I can. For example, I can't even see. I can't. I tell you what. I put my hand there. Ah, I could just see my hand come in. So, um, but I can still drive because I look around constantly, you know, so you, you, you adapt, you know, you, you just don't uh, rely on that anymore. You just, you just, you just, nature tells you to, to be looking around all the time. So um, that's not the problem, but I, I do have problems with in, sometimes in, in a supermarket, people think I've seen them and I bang into them. And I just cross me say, oh, he can see me because he, he can see me with that peripheral vision, vision. Cannot, anyway, get back to the story. So I'm in the hospital. Um, I'm in the hospital, and the chief, they came. And when they saw me, I looked at them, and I couldn't focus. Uh, my eyes were like looking, I'm looking all around because of the, 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 the impact, you know, it affected my, my mind and my, my vision. And I couldn't see, and I, and I could hardly see, because my field of vision was actually, in, in, it, it was, some of it was gone, you know, when you call a field of vision. That means to say, you, you know, you like you look at pixels, you know, like pixels, some of the pixels were not there. I, there's some big gaps, you know, that came back some of it. The doctor said it would never come back, but it, that was not true because it did. And I gained a lot of my vision back, but not all of it. So some some irreparable damage had been done. And um, so let, let's get back to the story again. And um, so I saw them. And when they saw my eyes going like this, she said to me, ladies, she said, I thought you were gone. I thought you'd lost your mind. You know it like a cabbage, you know, people have these accidents and, and they, they they lose their brain or something and they, they're never the same again, you know, that happens a lot. And uh, she thought, she thought it happened to me because my eyes were not focusing, it's going like this, you know, like somebody's drunk, you know. And I couldn't focus, every time she was there and she was there, then they were there, there. I, I kept having to do that all the time. To, to see them, it was, it was quite horrific. I mean, if you were watching it, see, Tim's had it, you know, he's had it, let me take a drink of water. I've got a canteen here. Um, excuse me, yeah. One, two, three. Mm. Uh, I had a coffee uh, to wake me up this morning so I could do the show, otherwise, I wouldn't, have, <laughs> wouldn't be able to do it. And uh, coffee dries you out anyway. Um, yeah, back to the back to the um, back to the story. So, um, what am I doing? Where, where am I? Uh, I'm in, I'm in the I'm in the hospital with them anyway. So, that was just one incident. I thought, oh my god, I know what they're thinking now. I'm a, I'm a cabbage or something. Well, maybe I am. Maybe why my eyes is looking like my brain has got, you know, it's got, it's turned to jelly or something, you know. But then how am I thinking like I am now? So I, I thought it couldn't have all gone. So otherwise I wouldn't be thinking, would I? So anyway, so um, mm, back to sleep again. They went, I don't know where they went, but uh, um, so uh, I, I'm back to sleep again. So in and out of consciousness, I don't know what is going on. Uh, I know they've got me all wired up with all this, you know, like it's like in hospital, you know, you've got this, uh, this, uh, what's it, inter interven intervenous stuff all over, you, all over you, and right. you've got an oxygen thing up your nose, you've got an oxygen stuck up your nose to keep you, you know, I mean, that was the best part of it actually, because the oxygen, you could really, it was really making me feel quite good. The oxygen, you know, I got addicted to it. And I said, I said, no, they, they took it off in the end, and I said, no, no, give me that back. I like it, you know. I like I like the uh, this I like this this, this feeling this oxygen is giving me and I said no you get too used to it you're gonna that was later on but anyway let's get back to the uh, to what happened so I'm in the hospital and um, and uh, I'm in I'm laying in bed and at some point I had this experience like I told you I had this experience and I, I remember it like I remember it clearly about the details of it. Okay, and it because it's like no other experience I've ever had, and um, uh, and I, I'd ever I, I've I'd read books, I'd read that famous book before about near death experience. I don't ask me the name of it, 
uh, I'm very bad on names, but I did read a book that was written in the late 70s that was called, uh, what's it called? The, uh, one Jeff, by, you know the, name? the one by Raymond Moody? Yeah, that's it, Moody, Mr. Moody. I remember the Moody part, Raymond, I don't But uh, Raymond Moody, and it, it's it's called Life After Life or something like that? I think so, life yeah. After, I think life it is. After life. Yeah, Life After Life, uh, not Life After Death. And uh, I read that book, you know, years ago, and I, I thought, wow, I'm blown. What a hell of a book. And that wasn't the only book I read. I read uh, some reincarnation books. So I was a big book reader once. I mean, I read thousands of books even before I was 10. And then I went on to read many more afterwards. And then, but my, my eyes were not good. And I, I was, one eye says one thing and the other one says, oh, you need glasses for that. And I don't want to wear specs. I don't want to wear specs. So what I just do is uh, now I audio everything. Anyway, getting back to the story. So I'm, I'm in this state of mind, and I call it a state of mind because that's what it is. You can't describe it any other way. It's a state of mind uh, where, where you're where, where nothing is the same as here. Nothing is the same. You can't describe it as being the same. Why? It's like you're 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 in a a, a place of, of uh, and like everybody says on your program, it's pure pure love. There's just love there. That's there. That's the first thing you feel. That's you. That, this is different. I'm not used to this. I, I don't. I don't. I'm not being. I've never been loved like this before, or at least since I was a baby. In my mum, with my mum picked me up and loved me. It's like it's like complete love, you know, like the, it's unbelievable. And I thought that's strange. Nobody's loved me like this before. Uh, and then I, I got this amazing feeling of guilt. Okay, <clears throat> and I don't know if any any of your guests uh, 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 have had this same feeling, but uh, this this guilt was was really strong. Um, that I, I I knew I'd done the wrong thing. I knew I'd had a couple. I shouldn't have driven that car. I smashed a brand new car up. I've gone and turned my whole world upside down just for the sake of, of a couple of drinks, you know. And this was was right on my mind, you know, all the time in hospital. I'd messed up, basically, uh, not small time, big time. And um, so I was, in, and I was. That was. Like, I'm too. I'm too guilty to be in this place. <laughs> Why are you making a fuss of me? I'm, I should be getting slapped. I should be going to hell by now. You shouldn't be like this, you know. And I didn't even, I didn't assume that I was in heaven or anything like that. I just assumed that I was being cared for in access to what I believe I should be. You know, I didn't deserve it, basically. Uh, so I was getting that feeling. And at the same time I was feeling this, I had this, it was it was like more like telepathy. It wasn't it wasn't it was somebody speaking, but in my mind, like uh, like uh, more like a knowing, and it was saying, no, 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 you loved you, you're okay. We don't blame you. You've done nothing wrong. You've done nothing wrong, and that kept kept coming over. And it's come out from this from my right hand side, my right hand side, not on the screen, left hand side, it's like left hand, but right on my right hand side, from. Coming up there, the information seemed to, that was making me feel uh, guilty, not, not, not guilty. On the left-hand side was uh, uh, a figure sitting in a seat, uh, uh, like a throne, like a queen sitting in a throne, like, like that, that, that kind of feeling you get. And it was in my peripheral, peripheral vision, that's that word again, um, um, sitting over there uh, on the left-hand side, and we were traveling through this baby blue, baby blue, like, it's like a, like space, but there was clouds, you know, like nebula or something like this. It was just we were going so fast, and we were just traveling. And I think that this this thing was a guide. And, you know, people say, "Oh, it's Jesus is God." I don't know what it was, so I'm never going to claim that. Am I? I, I don't know, and I, and I I don't want to be sort of like accused of saying, "Well, oh, you, you you met God, yeah." No, I can't say that. You see, so that's, I'd rather not. I'd rather not say what it was because I don't know. So I just imagine it's some kind of a spiritual guide, something that's always been with me and something that's making me feel that I'm not alone. I'm not going through this all alone. I'm not, I'm not, this is something that is an experience that's being shared rather than just me uh, uh, in the middle of nowhere wondering what the hell's going on and all this love and everything else, you know, loving me to infinity. And so, um, so uh, anyway, um, so I, and you know, the strange thing was, I thought, well, now that I'm in this state, you try experiments, you think, well, let me have a look around. Let me look. When I looked around to see what was in the chair, all I could all I could do was what well, every time I looked my turn my head, 
this person in the chair was moved, moved it, stayed in my peripheral vision, so I could never see who it was. They just stayed there on this on the uh, this vision side. I couldn't see, and uh, I thought that's strange. Why won't they let me see them? They, they know that I. They just wanted to show their presence, whatever they were. But they were sitting in a th like a throne with a robe on. That's what I could see. A robe. I could see what like a robe, and a golden chair, and it was just riding along through the cosmos really like this and all the time uh because everything was happening at once um like they like the other people have spoken on this program uh everything was happening at once there was all these sensations of of uh th there was me saying sorry 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 and there was some them saying whoever it was no 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 it's it's you're okay you're you're okay you know you're and it wasn't like that it was not like a it was really soft voices and there was like all this like voices, like music, music, like voices in harmony everywhere, like wind blowing. Like, shh, shh, like this. You could, you could, you could hear, you could feel it. Everything with all the sensations was was wonderful, you know, beautiful, beautiful feeling. And I thought, my God, I, I'm gonna have a look at my legs. Uh, I, I, how am I flying? Like, have I got the wings? You know, what, how am I doing this? You know. So I looked down, I couldn't see any legs. And what I found was that if how I thought, I could look right through what I thought was my body. I could like through and I could do a loop, actually a loop through my body to turn around and see everything. But this thing stayed on the left of me, and this voice on the right uh, up there stayed up there, constantly reassuring me, telling me that I, I was not guilty and not guilty. And, and I insist that I was. I said, I, and I was speaking in a very high voice because when you're very high, when you're high and you're you're like in an emotional state, your voice goes high as well. And my voice sounds like this. Oh, I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to do it like, I'm like a baby child, you know. I really, I really, I won't do it again. Oh, oh, oh. Like this. Uh, I, I know that sounds funny now, but at the time, I tell you, it was, uh, it was like very, very emotional, you know. And I will never do it. And I shouldn't have done it. And I, and I oh, I'll do it. And I'm sorry for all the things. Because I thought this was judgment. I thought now I'm, I'm in a, I'm in a place where I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be judged. No, I, I thought this, uh, yeah, this is all very nice now. Maybe they're warming me up for something, you know, like. Uh, getting me ready for something that's going to be a little bit more. Uh, but there was no, none of this judgment, none of this looking at uh, all these, like the other people said, because every, everyone's, some of them, we had some of the same experiences, but everything didn't go as in every other, you know, you see these other people that come on the show, they, they say about this, and it seems like, um, it, it seems like they, uh, they, they all got, they haven't got the same experience, but they had similar things happening. Like uh, like the stars rushing by and all this nebula and all this lovely baby blue colours and gold colours and stuff like that, yeah. So, um, but it, it, every every single case is different because we're all different, we're all unique. Um, but we're a grain of sand on a big beach, you know. That's that's how it is. But it doesn't matter. We're all unique, despite that, you know. Anyway, um, this feeling that this feeling that I shall never ever forget it. And you know, most most people say that. Um, uh, uh, I, uh, I, 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 most people say that they don't want to go back. Uh, I didn't have a choice. I, I wasn't even asked. They said, "Oh, well, now would you like to go back? Because your mom and dad are waiting for you. Your children are waiting for you. Don't forget, you've got to pay for that house or whatever." No, I didn't get that. I, I didn't get that at all. Uh, my one was just a quick exit, and so it was like I say, everyone, everyone was different. There was no God telling me, uh, "Hi, Tim, welcome here." But you've got to go back. No, there was nothing like that. It was just uh, uh, these beautiful voices telling me uh, in my mind, and it wasn't like they were speaking. I was the only one that's speaking, but when I, it seemed like I was, but maybe I was hearing my own voice and not there. But their their voice was saying, "Don't worry, Tim. Don't worry. It's 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 okay." But not in that voice. Such such a beautiful voice that, like like your mother. You know, when your mother speaks to you when you're a very tiny baby, you know that's your mum speaking. And, you know, you think, oh, that's great. You know, it's so nice to have a mother. And she's singing a lovely high voice, almost like a tune singing to you. Rockabye baby. Oh. That's why I was getting this rockabye baby feeling on the treetop, you know. And I thought to myself, oh, it's a beautiful feeling, you know. Oh, I, I love this feeling, you know. I love it. And, um, you know, I, I know I can't tell any more things because nothing more happened. It was just that all the time. And how, however long that lasted, I don't know. It, it, seemed, it seemed like a, a long time, but I, I, I didn't want it to stop. I know that. <laughs> but then I, I just popped. I just popped out of that. And when I was, when I woke up, 
I, I, I wasn't really wake. I, I came out of it, and that all went away. All that the angels and everything, the man of the chair, whoever was sitting in the chair, the voices and everything. That I was down to earth, <coughs> and um, lo and behold, there was an, a lady nurse, very, quite a nice looking girl too, Spanish nurse, and she was um, inserting a tube in into me, you know, um, uh, and into, into you know, like when, when you. Uh, into your, into your, you know, like where you, you urinate, you know? Right. Um, you don't have to urinate. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but they put a tube inside, actually right, inside right, you. Right, And it's not on the outside, it's on the inside. Yeah. And it, it, hurt, it hurts a bit, you know? Yes. Because they're sticking it on the inside, and, you know, if you're a man, you would know that that, that hurts. It's not like a lady. Right. Um, but a bigger big, big hole, you know, it really hurts. And um, uh, it, it, was, it was not so much hurting too much, it was uncomfortable. And, and 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 to see a lady doing it, uh, sort of like give me a sort of made me sort of, you know, what's going on here? <laughs> and I, I I thought, you know, I, I don't know, it was okay, you know, yeah, because that, that's their job. Anyway, so I thought, I said, she, and she was so kind, and she had a voice like an like the angel. Now I know you're going to say you're going to say, ah, uh, that was the angel voice talking to you while he's in your subconscious, half asleep, half awake. But no, because the vo the voices weren't coming from my left hand side. That's where she was. They were coming from the right hand side. She was speaking to me in Spanish, and as I understood Spanish, uh, I, I could understand what she was saying. She's being very kind. She said, "Don't worry, it's okay. We're, we're looking after you. We're going to um, do this because we know you know we knew you you need this. You have to have it." And she's talking gentle, gentle tones, you know, like, and and, and it was like it, it, the way it merged actually it merged nicely with the uh, with the popping into my body again, uh, which I didn't experience any, I what I remember, no pop sound or nothing like that. It was just, it was just a, an awakening, uh, uh, quite a rude one actually, because from from what I was going through, it was such a lovely feeling. And uh, like I said, the only other experience I had near to this, uh, close to this, was not, was not the, uh, there was no love in the other one. It was just a feeling of just release. Uh, release and freedom, and that was uh, my out of body experiences, which uh, which we could talk, talk about later. But uh, as far as the, the near death experience is, is concerned, that's that's exactly as I described it. That's exactly what happened. Um, I didn't I didn't exaggerate. I didn't uh, augment, uh, elaborate. I didn't. I just told you exactly how it was, and it might have taken a long time to explain that. But like all your, like all the other people I've seen on here, and what and the books I've read, they've always said the same thing: that there's no time. You don't, and you, the, the things you remember is always a good thing, not, not a bad thing. Although I know some people have been to hell and back, I, I don't know. That's never happened to me. I've only had that in nightmares, but I didn't have that. Was no experience. This was completely pure, uh, pure um, love and and uh, empathy. You know, empathy. That that feeling of empathy, like sympathy, empathy. Um, that, that whatever you've done, it, it didn't matter. You know, you can be forgiven for everything, you know, and, and that you are now in a place of forgiveness. And so stop stop worrying about uh, your, your you know, the, the, what you've done and, and the, the brand new car, you know, the problems, that, you know, you, you're going to face in this in, in that reality. Think about that you're here now and that, that your everything is, uh, you are innocent. That's the, the feeling of total innocence. Total innocence. So, uh, so I was relieved of all my innocence, and uh, that's that's uh, that's in a nutshell, really, what what happened to me. Well, thank you for sharing your experience with us. You were going in and out of consciousness from the beginning, and all of a sudden, you went from conscious to unconscious to directly into this realm. Is that what happened? Unconsciously, I I, I don't. Uh, I see. The thing is, uh, I was in in a in a terrible state. You know, I was I was in pain. I'd been operated on. Uh, uh, you know, you see, the thing is, how how do I know? Unless I go back and speak with the doctors, which I didn't. I mean, maybe I should have done, and said, what 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 exactly did you do? I, I'm told I had a blood transfusion. I'm told that the bone went in my. I don't know. I cannot have no recollection of of actually uh, when the time was or how it happened. I just know that I I remember I remember this. This experience, I, I will never forget it. Actually, and I think of it every day, every single day of my life. I think of it because uh, it, 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 it's it's not an everyday experience. Some people don't even get it until they die, um, um, but some people get it uh, multiple times. I've seen, I've seen it on, I've read it in books, and I've seen it on this on this particular show and other shows, you know. Uh, and I thought to myself, I've just got to, I've got to to tell people about this. 
And I, I actually mentioned it to you. I thought, actually, what happened? I, that's how I got on the show. I said, look, I think you're doing a great job. And this was amazing. And I, and I, I think it was a story that I, I really liked and I give you and I showed you this, this was good. And then you connected with me and I thought, well, what? But I'm gonna, I didn't ask to be on it on the year, but, but now that you ask me, why don't I go on it? You know, because uh, it's, a, it's a good idea. Why not? You know, um, uh, you, know you do hesitate uh, a little bit. Well, what are people going you know, what, what to think? But I don't care anymore. Um, uh, I, I don't care. I, I think we're in an age of revelation. I think we're an age, uh, in, in an age uh, where, where, you, you know, where, where everything's more transparent. And you, and you just speak about you just say it you say it as it is and you don't hide it anymore. That's how we got. That's how we're going now. That's the, that's in what direction we're going. If you ask me. After your experience, did you have any new abilities that you didn't have prior that could be considered psychic? Okay, uh, I, I'll tell you the truth. Okay, I've always been psychic. Always, I I I, I was drawing, making drawings of two planes going down in a big city. And they were going down slanted, just like in the, in the video you see when the planes go into the towers. I, I, I was drawing pictures of that since the 80s. And I said, I don't know why I'm drawing these pictures. Why am I drawing these pictures? It's horrendous. Uh, an airplane going down in the city, uh, a big airliner going down in the city, right? Which you've never seen it happen. Um, it never happens. You know, it has to happen. But I mean, it was like, why am I getting this message? So I've always had, I've had the psychic, I've had the psychic thing. I've always had it. Um, but I would say that it was more, all, uh, all these things were more augmented. They were amplified uh, after that. They were like bigger, you know. In fact, um, it wasn't long after this accident. I think it was about, uh, uh, about a couple of years when I had a dream of, I, I dreamt of two towers, uh, two towers uh, what, what that looked like billboards because they had the, I, I suppose, you know, you say in America, I guess, but I, I say suppose. I suppose it was uh, the floors, many different floors. And this air, aircraft uh, with pointed wings, just like a jet, went, went into there, turning sideways and bang. And the bang was so loud in my dream that it woke me up. And I, and I, I, I was in a sweat. And I told my then wife, I said, look. I said, uh, I've just seen this house. And she said, you're not flying anymore because I fly paragliders with motors. I have done for 30 years. I don't do it anymore. I stopped about 10 years ago. Um, but um, yeah. Um, anyway, um, she said, don't fly again. And I said, no. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so to answer your question, the answer to your question is yes. Uh, I, I did. I've always had them. But this after that, I was getting dreams of Concord crashing and that crash, you know. I had uh, dreams of children crashing in midair flight, uh, and they were being given a prize, and that actually happened. A midair collision with children um, uh, being involved, a lot of children dying. Uh, I knew, but the only thing I couldn't ever do was to tell when this thing was going to happen. They wouldn't ever pinpoint a time. It was just that it was going to happen, and when it happened, oh, again, you know, it happened, and I couldn't never warn anybody about it, you know, because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted people to know. Um, that this was this had happened, uh, so they could warn them. So, yeah, you see, people are going to think you're a nutcase if you say, "I had a dream. Uh, uh, I had a dream. I, I do it now. I don't care anymore. Uh, I had a dream, and and uh, uh, and and this is what's going to happen." And and then it doesn't happen for a long time. People say, "Yeah, it's one of your dreams again." And then, uh, but then it does happen. It does happen. And and I, I wish it didn't, but it, it does. And so I had another a dream of another accident. I've been been another accident, and it happened. A car, a car went into the back of me when I was stopped. When I was stopped on the motorway, and some some idiot had, uh, uh, had just knocked a light off or something of, of the other person's car, and decided to stop in the fast lane of, of, of the main mo Tenerife mo motorway in the Canary Islands. And all this traffic was stopped, and a car at the back was doing going so fast he didn't have time to stop. Uh, we'd all stopped, and he was coming up from a long way, and then probably in a dream, and then realised that he had stopped, put the brakes on and turned another new car into a banana. And that was another new car, Fiat Punto, another one gone, completely gone. And I was getting fed up with buying new cars, you know, by this time, as you can see. But um, yes, uh, to answer your question, uh, things were much more augmented and I did have a lot of strange things happen to me. Uh, one of the strangest things that happened was more glasses moving around on tables. I was in a jazz club and uh, uh, with a friend, um, 
uh, um, uh, with a friend singing. Alberto's name was Alberto. He plays a, a, a soprano saxophone, uh, uh, quite a quite a big uh, uh, guy, quite fat fat guy. Nice person, you know, Spanish guy. And we were sitting there at a jazz club uh, and uh, called Around Midnight, which is um, owned by another friend, Jay. And um, in, in, in a place called Las Americas, played in Las Americas. And we sat there and this glass of, this wine glass went across the table and said cheers to his wine glass, you know. Ding, I heard the ding. I watched it, I heard the ding. I, heard, I can't believe it. This, the glass, this glass has just gone across and he said, come on, Tim. Come on, have you had too much to drink? I said, no, I don't drink much, lady, because I, you know, I, I, my accent, I just only have a couple of wine, what I drink. So anyway, um, I looked to the band and enjoying the music, and then I heard the cling again. Ding! He said, I can't believe it, Tim. I saw that glass go back in touch. Look, 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 they were together. And so um, what, what's going on? You know, what's going on? Uh, another experience, I was in another bar when, when the, these little Chupito glasses, the ones you put whiskey and have a shot with, they were going round and round in circles. I thought something's going. Something's going. Something's happened to me. What is going on? What's next? You know, um, and of course, all this uh, earthquakes. I knew about the Fukushima earthquake. I knew that was happening. I could see all these cars floating around in the water and everything like this in my dreams. And, and I was waking up out of these dreams. And I knew that something's going to happen. But how can you tell anybody something's going to happen when you don't know when it's going to happen? How can you do that? You just you're just in this in this uh, in this states of frustration of knowing that something's going to happen and uh but not knowing when so you can't warn anyone you know or you can because they just watch out it's going to be an earthquake at any time you know uh no uh, you, you can't do that you 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 you're going to just put the wind at the fear of god at everybody who does believe it and and, and nothing this nothing's going to come of it because uh, it, it may be not happen in two years it, which is in some cases it happens so that's that's the way i can answer that question so yeah um True, I, I did. I did get more, more of 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 the same. You know, uh, much more than even before uh, of this uh, paranormal uh, uh, activity, the stuff happening in my life. Yeah. How did your life change spiritually or religiously afterwards? Good question. Uh, because um, I, I'm going to think a little bit about this question because. Um, about how it's always been and about the before and after uh i've i've never really been uh a big believer in a man on a cloud with a beard i i, I thought this is crazy and there's another aspect to it I, I, you know I, I've, I've i have studied like you do you know uh bible the the theory you know and things what what how and this, and this business of something creating itself it's been something so hard for me to, you know, understand. So uh, I've never really been somebody that's that's really um, believe. And yet, and yet, I know that something is there. So what I've done is what everybody else does. You know, you as you evolve, as you get older, you you make more conclusions and come to more assumptions. You, know, you, you conclude more than assume. First, you assume, then you then you then you conclude, don't you? First, you assume, and then you. So I was concluding. Over t over time, more and more uh, uh, about um, about what what is actually going on, and, and stop listening to these preachers, and start listening to your own inner 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 voice. You know your, yourself and your intuition, and what what you ch everybody's channeling. You are, I am, everyone. Uh, we're channeling all the time. Uh, be careful what channels. And I think what's happening. Our guides make sure that we 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 get the <laughs> we get the right ones come through, and 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 they show us which are the false, fake, negative ones. Uh, so I think that we're, we're in, in, in a, to, to a certain extent we're, we're protected, um, depending who we are and, and what, what life we live. So um, getting back to that, uh, that uh, spiritual uh, thing, uh, I've always been spiritual. I've always, uh, especially when I, I play the uh, piano, it's like I'm in connect, direct connection with whatever there is up there. Uh, I've always been cosmically aware. At six years old, I, I looked at my arms and I touched myself like this. I said, who am I? What am I? When you do this at this age, it means to say you're becoming, you are aware of yourself. You cost, they call it cosmic awareness. It's like you've, you, you've, you've actually come to the point where you question what, what you are, why you, why you got fingers, why you've got left. And, and you, you get this wonderful feeling uh, that you, you know, you, you're, you're something here, 
but you you still don't know what. But you know that it's it's uh, you you become aware of something. And and I got this at a young age, and um, so uh, all my life I I I, I when I started off going to Sunday school and things about we weren't a religious family or anything. That'd be a school, uh, church just across the road. I used to go what's called Sunshine Corner, and uh, you know my mother used to let me go there and used to used to. to Talk about Jesus and the, and the, all the stuff, you know. But you know, the, we never, it never really stuck, you know. It's like, well, yeah, I, I believe in him. I think it's, it's good chap. He did some good things and all that. I like it what he did, but I think he was one of many. I just think he was uh, the famous one, the one that, that made it to the top. <clears throat> I think that the the that then. So what I concluded was, uh, um, so after after did I get more? Did I get more? The question was after did I get, get more? Uh, uh, did I believe in God more? Did I become a Bible thumper? Uh, uh, no, I didn't. Uh, I, I think I just I just carried on as I did before. Uh, so it, interesting. I never thought about what you asked me. I never thought it should it be more magnified uh, than before. Uh, I think I did. In the last 10 years, I've woken up a lot about what's been going on around the world. And, and, and I think anyone that's been... Uh, had that experience like um you know i think what happens is we, we all have a something happens in our life uh, and and uh, like an accident or something like is all the experience i had and it's a kind of it jolts us into 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 it starts something off it starts the ball rolling uh, about our how how we see everything you see and um especially I mean, when you when you've been there when you've been to a special place you say, well that must be heaven it couldn't be anywhere else but uh, lots of people say, yeah, well, you know what? You know, you've had this this stuff put in your veins, painkillers. You know, how do you know that this isn't isn't giving you, uh, you know, but I did have hallucinations afterwards. I, and I saw these monsters, you know, in, in hospital when I was in hospital. I saw these monsters, I like, like like cartoon figures, you know, with faces that kept changing all the time. And I told the doctor, I said, I'm seeing monsters, I'm seeing monsters. And they all came in. And I thought they're going to cart me off to the nut house or something. Because they were very serious about it, I said. Because I said it's in, in Spanish, uh, you you are there, monstros, monstros, grandes, yeah, uh, uh, like like a cartoon, you know. And they kept changing; they were big monsters. And I I put it down to the 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 the, the activity that, that happened in my brain. Maybe the something it did something to my brain. But that was uh, that was definitely hallucinations. Did this experience change you in any way as a musician? Yeah, no, like, so again, I've got to think. I mean, when you ask this question, I notice that people pause and think, well, when are they going to start speaking? But now I realize that when you, when you, when you have to ask these questions, you have to think. You can't just straight, straight away because I, I, I'm trying to think if anything did happen. Yes, I became more creative, even more creative than before uh, with my music. Yeah, yeah, it, I, will, I will say that because I, I made several really, really good songs. Uh, and I'll send you. I'll send you them in, uh, later uh, on the uh, messenger. Um, some beautiful songs, you know, that, like Latin jazz stuff, you know, but, but beautiful melodies, you know, that that flew. Like when you hear them, the whole thing like takes takes you off on a journey of like flying, you know, like like eh, beautiful. And um, so I, I I would say yes. I would say yes to that that that, that question. Um, uh, yes, that's the answer to that. Yes, it did. Do you fear death at all? Well, I, I didn't actually before because I, I, I had a friend, I had a friend that I'd invited around for dinner who's now dead. Um, and um, he told me that he'd been to the other side as well. And he said, he didn't describe it like me. He just, he said that he said there was love, but he didn't, he didn't have the, he didn't go into detail like I did. He just said, I, I passed away and come back again. Uh, he had some kind of illness that was going to get him in the end. He knew that as well, heart condition. And, um, <laughs> and so I read these books also. Um, so I I I don't always thought that they can't, it cannot be like a switch off thing, like you know I don't, don't think so. I don't think that you could. Um, uh, I never thought that that it's gonna well, you know you die and that's it black and everything you don't know nothing else. Uh, I don't I don't. There's much more to it. There's a lot more to what we're, and that we're being told. And I think if we were told. Uh, it we were it wouldn't be the same. It would affect our experience here on Earth. If we were told, if we were told how everything worked, it would be like it would be like having a quiz and showing the the, the people in the in the audience, uh, showing the people in the audience um, exactly uh, 
uh, what the answers were. They would know the answers, and so there's no quiz. You know, it's just like uh, what. Yeah. Um, so that's what it is. It's all about finding out yourself. That's why we're here. I think this is an experience that we're all here, and uh, um, to find out why we're here. And uh, when we get up there, we're looking back and we're seeing ourselves down here and saying, <laughs> "You didn't get it, did you? You didn't get it, did you? You didn't even think, oh God." You know, that's how I see it. That's how I see it. So um, I think that is like a, a like a not like a like one of these search for the treasure hunt treasure hunt thing. You know, you're here. And you get these breadcrumbs coming to you, and you, and you, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're supposed to give you a clue, you know. And a lot of people are not picking up on it. You are, a lot of your guests are. Uh, I, I certainly am, and I try to persuade other people to. Um, you know, you've got to, you've got to be, you've got to be thinking. This is a challenge. Something happens, and, and instead of you thinking, oh, God doesn't like me, you know, whatever, you think that is something you've got, you've got to get over yourself. Like a butterfly has to get out of a chrysalis, you know, it has to get out of a chrysalis. It cannot be strong enough to fly if it doesn't do that. It's that exercise of getting out of that, that frustration that actually gives it the power to fly, you know. So there's some very interesting things I've picked up over the years. And you, you don't always pick this up. Is that you, don't, you, you can spend your whole life finding these things out, you know. And then in a, in a, in a, in, in, like you're learning all the time anyway. You pick these things up. As you go, and and you do it by listening to other people's experiences. I mean, what what I've learned by by reading books uh, about about all these types of things, the conundrum, what we call the conundrum zone, uh, twilight zone, whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, it, it's like it's like looking under stones, looking around corners, and and you can find these things, right? And and it's up to your discernment uh, uh, to to un to to understand whether it's fake or it's it's true. If you hear enough of these things, uh, or you see enough of these things, and you know that they're not connected in the way they know what each other's talking about, like you could say to me, Tim, you've been watching all these podcasts, I just picked up on it, and now you know all the things that happen, and you're just making a, a, a conclusion about all that. But no, uh, it's it's not that, because uh, this happened before I watched podcasts. I'd had read, read a few books about it, but that was all. I, I, I hadn't... Uh, you know, uh, and uh, amazingly, all this stuff happens later. There was no such thing as a podcast in those days when, when the accident. In the, in the 90s, late 90s, no. Internet has only just started. It was just everything was in its infancy. And then then, then many, many years later, you've got this, this podcast and things, which makes like an ordinary person, like into a TV star, more than TV star. You've probably got more hits than CNN, you know, CNN, if you're doing something like this. Mm. And that's the great interesting thing about it, because now people have got a window to see all this 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 stuff that before was would class you as a nutcase, you know, you couldn't speak to in the local pub, you'd be laughed out the pub, out the, out the, you know, we call it we call it a pub, you call it a bar, hmm. you'd be laughed out, and I was a few times to mention UFOs, to mention ghosts, uh, to mention that you know, like you went to heaven or anything. Like <laughs> oh. Well, while you're on the subject of UFOs, have you had a UFO experience? Yeah, well, that's another story in itself. Yeah, I have. Um, I have this reoccurring, uh, uh, um, reoccurring memory. Uh, you know, you, you, I, 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 you, you could say a dream, but I don't know if it's a dream. Or did a it start? Did it start after your NDE or before? Uh, before, long mm. before. Uh, uh, okay, I have a memory of actually meeting what I I consider to be an alien, um, because of what all the experiences are. You know, like um, I've seen on. People from MUFON and all that and, and stuff. You know, I, I even knew the, the guy that ran it. I know the girl, one of the ladies that run it was on your show. I saw that. But before her, there was a guy called Jan Hazen. Jan Hazen. It sounded like Tarzan, but Jan Hazen. He was, he was there and I, I knew him. I, I used to watch some stuff um, about this. And basically, um, uh, the, the, it seems like, you know, like my ones is the same as their ones. In the way that the the eye to eye contact from an alien is is their way of opening up your soul to open up your soul. So what I got was, and, and that's ever since I was a small boy, um, was this 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 being this being, and don't ask me what it looked like. It's just a, like a person, like a person. It must have uh, cloaked itself and made it look like a human or something. I don't know. They got technology to make themselves look like a rabbit, apparently, or an owl, because they can do that. You can see, you can might see a it might be a reptilian or something like this a reptile, but what you're seeing is an angel, you know, 
And and this is a bit scary as well, because then you never know if you're being fooled or anything. So it like, sort of puts everything on a in doubt, you know. But anyway, so um looking at looking at this 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 being come along, okay, with a with a case, a case, I don't know why what's in the case, a box of some sort, looked at me across the table. And every time I tried to look away, it just kept going like this, look at get, getting my t attention. And wherever I looked, it would look, look, do that, try to get my eyes to fix. And my eyes fixed on this being, OK? Um, it's, it's just a memory. I tell you, it's just a memory. I, it's not, it could be uh, in a dream. I could have dreamt it. I, I know I dreamt it a few times. But this being looks, look, looked me in the eyes. And when it did that, when I finally looked in the eyes of this being, I thought, well, let me, let, let's play ball, you know. He wants me to play ball. Let's play ball. Why not? I was a kid. And I said, let's play ball. And I looked in his eyes. And, and when it looked in my eyes, I felt like it was looking into my soul. I felt completely undressed, totally naked, as if I'd taken off my clothes. It could see everything about me, about my past and my future, everything. And when it finished, it just picked up the case and just walked away. And that was, that was the end of that experience. But another case was when I was in Warminster in England. A known place for UFOs because I was I was then uh, 1980 1979 uh, uh, 1980 I was really really into UFOs and the the main where they make all the crop circles I've been I've seen one being made by the way um, and it's it's amazing there's there's a place called Warminster and and there's loads of books written about this this whatever it was called that was visiting. Let me stop you for one second. What do you mean you've seen a, a crop circle being made? I mean, being made by a human or being made by an alien? Oh, well, that's the big question, because I, 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 I don't know. I, we always assume it's made by aliens, but then who, who had that technology in 1970? Well, you, I'm did. just saying, you, you said you saw it being made. Lights, at, lights, lights. You just saw lights, in the, lights from the night sky? In a field, in a field near and the my lights were making the lights were making the crops. Orange lights. Just going around, no, I tell you, let wow. me tell the story there. That's the first time okay. I've heard of that. No, yeah, I, I, I've got, it's a unique experience. I spoke to Colin Andrews, who is the actual father of crop circles, uh, about this, and he was really fascinated about it. Tim, after watching this podcast, people may want to reach out to you and ask you questions. Are you open to that? And if so, how do they reach you? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Um, just Facebook. Facebook is okay. Um, I'll give you the link, and and you can uh, you can you can put it under the link in the in the on the YouTube. No mm -hmm. problem. All right. Yeah. Do you have anything else that you're working on that you want people to know about? Um, if if they just connect with me on Facebook, um, then I'll be able to uh, and my group, my Golden Age group, which I've got also, with about six hundred people on there, five hundred fifty or something like that. Um, then, then I'll be uh, telling them about my my book. That I'm, I, I'll be writing a book uh, in, in the near future uh, about my experiences and about the way things are going on, on in the world. You know. All right. And uh, yeah. Well, before we finish up, can you leave us with one last positive message? Well, everybody says uh, you should love each other, which is, I think, like saying you have to eat to live. I mean, I think that's just basic. Uh, we have to love each other. But I think that, um, uh, um, you know, like if you're a boss of a company, pay the, pay the people that work for you the right, the right wages. You know, don't, if you're watching this and you're a boss, pay them the right money, you know, because uh, it, it, it all comes back to you in the end, you know. The other thing I say is that the mainstream media, be careful with it. Be careful with it. Don't, I would say, ignore it. Uh, and be very discerning about uh, alternative media. Use your your inner in a use your stomach uh, gut feeling for what you think is uh, not good and your heart what is good you know your heart and <clears throat> that's all I can say really except for you know you use discernment in all information that you see don't just say yes I agree with that because it, you you like the sound of it no go 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 and find out about it and get it verified because there's a lot of information out there put out purposely to throw you off the track. Uh, the mainstream media, I've given up with anything from that because I know it's controlled by the by the people that are doing all the bad things in the, on the earth now. And so I would say to keep away from the mainstream media and show a lot of the discernment with the with the uh, um, the uh, alternative media discernment. Be very careful with that. And uh, but uh, um, yes, of course, uh, like everyone else says, you know, try to love everybody. 
I know it's not easy to, to love somebody who's mugging you and violating you and things like that. So you just can't just, you've got to use that discernment too. Um, but, you know, but uh, basically your, your intent should be good intent, good intention every time. Of course, we're human, we get angry. We're living in the third dimension. We're not in the fifth dimension. A lot of people say, oh, we're in the fifth dimension. Try walking through a wall if you think we're in the fifth dimension. No, we're not. We're in the third dimension, and that's where we are at the moment. If we go to the fifth dimension in the future, let's let's, let's see what happens. But the moment we're here, are learning a lesson. Um, basically, those are the things that I, I would like to say is just use discernment. Use your, your heart for the good and your gut feeling for when you think something's bad. Your gut will tell you. Your heart will tell you when it's good. Uh, and that's it. It's been a great pleasure being on this show. Thanks. I appreciate it. Tim, thank you for your message. And thank you for being my guest. Thanks, Jeff. See you again sometime. Thank I, you. I hope so. And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff.